Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patea, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information and advice. Now today, check who's on the show. TJ, how you doing, my man? Really good, how are you? Hey, I can't believe I finally got you out of the bar onto the camera. That's incredible. Like, it's been, fucking fair it's one. took me like 10 years. Don't, don't jinx it, don't jinx it. And do you know what I'm also happy about? Go on. You're probably the only person I know that's got more tattoos than me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not finished yet, man. Oh, man. How you keeping, buddy? Yeah, good, good, you. Brilliant, yeah, I'm really pleased. So what we're going to do, so those of you who don't know uh, TJ, basically TJ is now a bare knuckle fighter. Now Before I, yeah. was a boxer. That's now you've changed over to bare knuckle. So we're going to talk about the bare knuckle aspect coming up in part two because <coughs> you've got a great fight coming up, which yeah, I can't I have, wait for you to talk yeah, about. Yeah, me too. But before we get into that, where are you from, mate? So I'm from the UK, you can probably guess by the accident. I grew up in a, a city called Plymouth, Plymouth. Um, which is the south. It's a seaside town or city. Um, I then came to Thailand oh, 10 years. 10 years ago. 10 years this Christmas. So you're still in school then? No, <laughs> I'm an old man, I'm 34. 34? It's not old, babe. It's old flipping out, I'm 54, son. What's up with you? But don't look at me, I'm over three, mate. Uh, I paid him for that. <laughs> so, so I came out originally for the first three months, for like a holiday, just to get away and whatever. Fell in love with the food, the culture, just the weather, it's just amazing. Went back after a week, I was so depressed, quit my job, saw everything that I own, and moved out. No, <laughs> fair yeah, play. I mean, one of the things I want to ask you, because obviously 10 years ago, you were 24 then. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, you know, you're a young lad. Yeah. Let, let's be honest, you know, I am going to flatter him a little bit, but you're not exactly <laughs> ugly, you know, you, no, you, you, you're, you're in good nick, you're in good shape, and, you know, why Thailand? Um, so my best friend, Liam, which I think you know as well, yeah. um, he was here on holiday at the time, doing a six-month sort of tour if you, if you will and uh, I need a holiday so I rang him up so I'm coming to Thailand he go, and I was winding him up he's yeah. like oh, bollocks no way you're not coming and then I rang him again the day after when I was in Bangkok I rang him with a Thai number of a payphone he was like are you in Thailand oh, I told you I was him. coming so he had no idea just no, thought you were winding him up and then, yeah he thought I was winding him up as usual but then um, yeah I turned up and then he was in Bangkok originally and that's where I landed obviously and I said, where are you, mate? You know, I'm thinking it's just around the corner. And he said, I'm, I'm down in Samui, Coast Samui, right? <laughs> yeah. I said, well, how do I get there? I get a bus, you know, jump on the train. Yeah. Oh, sweet. The train was 14 fucking hours. It was ridiculous. So overnight 14 trains. 14 hours. 14 hours all the way down, drinking with these Russians and stuff. And I turned up, and I think we were there for three or four months. So, so, sorry, for the whole three months. And it was just on the piss every day. It was just amazing. You know, Samui's yeah, that way. Yeah. It's busy. It's so fucking good. I must admit, I've been at Koh Samui and it really is, like you say, it's brilliant. I mean, I suppose you're doing the full moon parties and all those kind yeah, of things. every weekend. <laughs> Can you remember them? Uh, Not really. I remember the pictures, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, um, what do you mean, like, oh, man, did we really do that? Yeah. What was this? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Fantastic. So <clears throat> when you were back home, what was you doing uh, for work? What was your, your trade? So I was working. I've, I've had so many jobs. I, I've spent four years in the Navy, um, 16 to 20, then came out. Um, I've worked for the Money Group, which is debt consolidation. I've worked as a labourer. I've worked as a brickie. I've worked as um, I've did a lot of door to door sales. You know the oh, gas yeah, electric. Yeah, yeah. I did really well at that. I'm quite talkative, yeah. gifted the gab, and Brilliant. I used to target old women, <laughs> <laughs> knock on the door and try and give. He them didn't a... mean that. He didn't no, mean not, that. Not targeting a bad way, but, you know, because I just relate to them and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, uh, when I went back uh, after the first three months, um, I was still at uh, TMG, the Money Group. And uh, after that first week, I just sat in an office. It was just like, oh. Yeah. And, I, and I was looking at Liam's posts yeah. in Thailand. I was like, oh, he's down at Arkbar. He's, he's doing this. And I'm doing in, that. Eating a Greg's baguette. I was like, oh, for God's oh, sake. Oh, no. So, um, yeah, then I came out, obviously. And Samui, it's like... The Southeast Asia Ibiza when it's busy. Yeah, you know, it, like, it's yeah. crazy. In it just, in it just. Um, I mean, when you came over here, did you have any expectations? I mean, obviously, like you said to Liam, right, I'm coming out for a holiday. <laughs> Where are you? I mean, co- I mean, did you do any homework? Did you have any idea? No, so, so I'm sure this is the same for most people. But originally, when I was on the, on the flight and sort of booking the flight and on the way over, my perception of Thailand was yeah. like, Vietnam, <laughs> like, like, like jungle, just sort of everything's under, and like, like everyone lives in, in this little shack. Yeah. And I turned to Bangkok and the skyline is yeah. sky, it's bigger than fucking London. Yeah, bigger than Plymouth. 
uh, London New York and stuff. So like, um, yeah, my perception was <laughs> soon squashed on arrival. And the first thing that you notice when you come out is that heat. That, oh, don't you? Oh, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing. Don't you? But like, don't you? Yeah, it was crazy. And that heat, I was like, oh, this, this is me. Nice to be yeah. Heat. I must admit, I'm glad you said that because I've mentioned that before in a couple of my chats where people think I'm having a laugh when I say to them, you get off the airplane. Normally, when you're going abroad, you get off the airplane, you think, oh, the turbines, come on, get down the stairs. It's yeah, too hot. Yeah. And when you get off, you're like, damn it's getting hotter like what's yeah, going on and realize that wow this really is as hot as it is it's not just the sun it's the humidity mm. you get out and you, you just, i was in shorts t-shirt and flip-flops you know yeah. holiday mode and uh, yeah just dripping dripping with sweat but loving it really you know? yeah really do you miss plymouth um i don't actually um so when i went back um when i left the navy i moved to Newquay. yeah it's oh, yeah. about an hour away yeah um and my dad lived there at the time so i went down there for a bit um and that was more homely because i was away with the navy a lot and sort of yeah and that was a kid yeah. Newquay, i found lee my best mate and sort of you know um, Nuki for me is beaches, like a million yeah, beaches. Brilliant, you know, brilliant. It's stag like, weekend heaven, isn't it? It's a bit like Koh Samui. You've got yeah. that like stag, yeah, stag yeah. weekend birthdays, and yeah, it was cool, man. It was really good. Um, I'm supposed to be getting married, you know, mostly in January this next year, but because yeah. of COVID, but. I've got about 10 or 12 close friends from Nuki that are going to come out. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Like a little mate. reunion, sort of. Fantastic. Show them a bit of taste of Thailand. You know? when, when you talk about your friends back home, I mean, what do they make about you now living out here? I mean, you've been here 10 years. I mean, did they think, oh, TJ, he's just, he's having a spur of the moment, little flow, he'll go over, yeah, he'll yeah, be back, yeah. and 10 years later, you're not near anywhere going back. Do, do you know what? So, whenever I go back, I'm after again, a week, two weeks top, once you've seen everybody, your family, your close friends, then you start seeing he's had another fight, he's back in prison, he's still a drug addict, she's had another kid, nothing changes. It you doesn't, I mean? like, does it? It doesn't. It's not until you go out of, of, of the country, your home and stuff, that you realise how small a bubble yeah. England is. And yeah. the world's so big and beautiful. Yeah. And just, yeah, I, I wish I moved years ago, do you know what I mean? But more, more, more than 10. <laughs> I suppose the question has to be then, you know, if things didn't work out here, would you go back to Plymouth? Yeah, of course. Um, my mum, numerous times over the, the first couple of years, with me back and stuff. Yeah. And then I started boxing properly again. I, I took a break for about six years and then started boxing again. And my gran and my mum, they hate me fighting. I'll come home. You know, know, yeah. and they thought I was boxing for money. <laughs> Don't hurt my boy. Yeah, Don't hurt him. him. <laughs> and, and then um, the, the thought of going back, and again, nothing changes. And I'm not saying my life's better than my friends back home. Sure. That, that's wrong to say, yeah. but... It's just different. I, I just prefer my life than theirs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, yeah. if, what do you mean? You don't like the cold, the rain, the, the cold boring? Rain. <laughs> you get in a taxi, it's what? Oh, a thousand baht minimum. I know, it's mental, you, isn't you it? You 200 baht yeah. for like an hour, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So. I mean, we're going to talk about your boxing a lot more in part two, but aside from boxing, I mean, what do you kind of do here when you're relaxing, you're not training? I mean, what's your kind of like <sighs> daily routine away from your training? So, so it's changed uh, over the last couple of years. I used to play football at quite a high level. Um, I say high level. I, I pretty good um, and I stopped playing football when the boxing took off because yeah. I was always getting injured yeah. and I'm quite a rough I like to yeah. have a challenge with Dennis Wise are you? yeah I played with Dennis Wise <laughs> how much is that I'll show you a picture after I played, Brilliant. I played there you with go. Dennis Wise right um, yeah in Kuala Lumpur so I, I used to work for a company over there and we, uh, we did the master tours okay so we bring out like Dennis Wise Andy Cole um, Manaman um, Robbie Fowler any Arsenal players um, so that concludes today's video. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Frank you couldn't lie. You? <laughs> See, that's what I like. You can think on your yeah, feet. That's it. So it, it, it was a good man. So I was there and um, yeah, playing football with Dennis Wise, which was crazy. Uh, and that was always my sort of relax. I was boxing stuff yeah. and playing six a side or whatever. Yeah. Or football it was just like the, the whole social and the piss yeah. and stuff, um, which is fine. And then um, now over the last, I think um, boxing really took off properly now, what I'd say five years, would you say roughly? Yeah, it must be about, about then. About yeah, five I remember, years yeah. where I really yeah. just, tunnel vision, just, sure. just boxing, boxing, I'd say boxing and party and juggling the two. Well, yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about that in yeah, a bit okay. later, don't we? But um, with, with regards to relaxing, I like to travel. I know we're in Thailand and stuff. I'm not saying like I go to Japan or where I've been to Japan, but Koh Samet, Koh yeah, Chang. Nice. I love the island life. I love just doing nice. nothing. I got a bit of a Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, I got, got my dogs in that now. Yeah. Oh man, your dogs. Uh, dogs are funny, man. We're, we're gonna, I'll, I'll put a picture up of his dogs. And we had a really, really bad uh, uh, situation, didn't oh, we? Crazy, when, uh, yeah. well, which, which one was the, the one that so went you've missing? Got Reggie and Ronnie, like Ro the, yeah. the crazy <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> 
Um, so Ronnie, which is the smaller one, the, the, the youngest one. You say small, they're like great big yeah, powerhouses. Big, yeah, big <laughs> fat little bulldogs. But um, I just bought that new Jeep. Yeah. And uh, I took them up to the lake, walked yeah. them, and then we've just bought a new house, me and my fiance, Z. So it was about a kilometer from the lake. So I was showing my friend this new house and we right. stopped at the house and I stayed in the car. I didn't want the dogs, uh, dogs to jump out or whatever. And my friend looked at the house, got back in or reversed and then drove back. And I got back to my, I was like, where the hell's Ronnie? Oh man. Freaking out. Oh, oh you yeah, can imagine. I can imagine like, yeah. I've got no kids, it's not my kids. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Drove all the way back, fucking like crazy. And then um, in my head, I was thinking was that all the soy dogs, as you know, are yeah, crazy. Yeah. And, they're gonna rip them to pieces. A tiny yeah. little cute bulldog, yeah, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. got back there, couldn't find them. And I spent, that was about midday on the Thursday. And I think I spent, best when until it got, until it got dark, so six, seven mm. hours. And you know you know about the lake you've got, just, it's just jungle and land. Yeah, and all the trees walking, and the lake. Shouting, yeah. walking, that was for six, seven hours. Yeah. Bro- broke my heart, horrible, went back, went to every vet around the area, saying, have you seen mm. this dog? Facebook, as you know, mm. um, I, I did a post and sort of my girl, yeah. shed over a thousand shares Fantastic. which is amazing yeah, fantastic. everyone's a dog lover yeah, yeah of course so, you know and then so that was a thursday friday morning I was up in five o'clock screwing and it all sort of like i remember oh god the dog it, it takes like yeah. a, a minute or two the same thing spent morning to night the same just walking everywhere every possible place you could put everything going to houses knocking on doors just just trying wow. to do something you know because it was a few days wasn't it? Was it so it was 46 hours all together was it really so that was the, th- that was the friday wow. friday night I, I was a broken man I've, I've not cried since i was a kid and i was yeah. crying my eyes out do you know what yeah. i mean like and um saturday morning it's the funny part right uh saturday morning z goes through my fiance um, she goes, babe, I'm gonna go to the uh, to the temple and um, get get the monk. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. You're I'm, so like me. I'm, I'm You're not so a like me. Yeah. I've lost my dog in the bloody temple. Yeah. And, you know, so we had a massive argument. I was so yeah. so angry yeah. at her. Like, to think, oh, the temple's gonna set. Anyway, yeah. so that being said, she then went to the temple <laughs> at seven yeah. in the morning, and then. Uh, opened, it's called the path to be found, whatever, whatever that means, oh, okay. right? Okay, path to be found. Path to be found, well, it, okay. it, and that's the translation. But yeah. And then uh, about an hour or two later, she on the way back, she went past the house well, to try and to just, I don't know, just to try and find them. She's obviously emotional as well, and she rung me and couldn't speak. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it took about thirty seconds for her to tell me. I found Molly. I was no. like, no. I burst into tears. Oh man, I brilliant. Brought him back, and the poor little thing. So. He was under this little bush about 100 meters from where we potentially lost him. So I think he'd been running around yeah. and just whatever. But they say that dogs, they'll find somewhere to sort of hide and, and yeah. be safe. Yes, I yes. don't know, I was on yeah. Google and stuff and people were sending yeah. messages, which is nice. And then, um, yeah, brought him back and he was, you know, a mark on him. So, so on the Friday when I walked all day, I got attacked by so many soy I dogs. I know, they're terrible. They can be really bad, they're, they're so, really bad. So territorial, territorial yeah. I mean? And I was walking in like um, Mubans and jungles and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, how is he? He's got one mark in him, he's completely healthy. Right, he was starving and thirsty, as you can imagine, <laughs> yeah. for two days, but he, um, yeah, I gave him a massive bowl of food, he smashed through it and he's drinking. Fair and we, we got a swimming pool in our place, they drink out of the pool. He was there, <laughs> pool back, we just, yeah, bless him. And then he took, I think so that was on the Saturday morning, it took a good week, maybe even two weeks, for him to get back to, I say normality. He, he wouldn't want to come out. Yeah. I, I would say, walk Get his confidence back. And Reg, the, the big one, and then yeah. they normally run out. And he, he wouldn't come for a walk for a good, wow. at least a week. And that, now he's back to normal. Now he's Brilliant. Like, oh, shit back Brilliant. Again. So now <laughs> you're chasing on again. Come back. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not doing this again. Yeah, I warned you last time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> dogs, enjoying life out here, traveling around, things are going good. I've got to ask you, tattoos, what's going on? Because I get <laughs> nailed for this, right? I, I, people watch me and they're like, so why don't you wear sleeves and all this? I'm like, how about you jog on and leave me alone? <laughs> yes. So what, what's that? Because you haven't just got one of you. I mean, you've got a fair few. I'm pretty covered, yeah. It's got to the point now where like, I see a gal. I've, yeah. stopped, I've stopped, so I was getting tattoos which every day. I've got my legs done and stuff. And I've had to stop because I have to take about three or four days out of training. Yeah, to yeah, heal, cool. right? yeah, yeah. Size of that, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. takes like three or yeah. four days. So. I've actually stopped, but it, I look at it and I go, oh, I hate gaps. I'm like, oh. So just, I've got my head, my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, look, oh, there you go, go on. I've got, got my head done, my back's full <laughs> piece, um, legs in my finished. Yeah, me, and, and my chest and So stuff. the question has to be, what's the most painful part of the body you've had? Oh, do you know what? So I got my neck done. Um, <laughs> I, got my, I got my neck done um, a couple of years back. 
and uh, it was horrible. It, 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 I thought it was the worst pain. Like, on your Adam's apple, oh, if you could, you're just touching it, you get in oh. So that was horrible. And then he went round the back, up the back oh. of my ears. Oh. And that was even worse. Oh. Than, so I was like, oh my God. And I thought that was definitely the worst. Then um, I got my knees done. Okay. And yeah. I did this knee, and that took, that's to take about three hours, two hours, nothing. It took about eight hours, because it was so painful. Oh. People were different with tattoos and different places yeah. went more, but my leg was twitching and like, it was horrible. <laughs> so we stopped, let it you heal. You thought he was playing football again. <laughs> we stopped and let it heal. And then my, and the guy was like, why don't you try numbing cream? I was like, no, that doesn't work. He goes, yeah, it does. Put numbing cream on. And it was like, oh, I've been doing really? all this pain and torture when I couldn't like, you oh. can't, couldn't feel a thing. So that, that, that was about three hours, easy, easy. Um, and since then I've had numbing cream. That was four hours really quickly, couldn't feel a thing. Just sat really? there on my phone, nothing. Wow. Um, so yeah, even, even the back of my hair, which I had not so long ago, six months or whatever, that had loads of numbing cream, but it was still, yeah. it was still more painful than that, and that was with the cream on. I must admit, when I had my, my whole back done, <laughs> yes. the center back, of my back. back on oh, the spine, yeah, back, God, back yeah. He started back. right in the middle. I remember, I never forget it. I was 19 years old, I'm over the chair. You ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. And he went, oh, Was that your oh, first one? Oh, no, that was my back. I'd done my arms first, <laughs> yeah. but there's first bit on my back, and he right in the center, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, stop, stop, yeah, stop. He's like, what's the matter? I said, mate, I said, that's, <laughs> whoa, whoa. And he was like, oh, shut up, come on, get on. like, dude. And I actually, I know, I know exactly as bad as it feel. sounds, I <coughs> truthfully thought maybe I should just have an outline and a little <laughs> yes, bit of shading. No. I, I thought I, I don't need it filled there, in. There's no sort of shame in saying like, oh, I'm a bare knuckle boxer. I like yeah. to think that my pain threshold yeah. is better than most. <laughs> yeah. But I could have cried from oh. my neck and my back. Even the back, I got my back done. I finished not so long ago. And that was, oh, was horrible. I think on the spine there must be loads of nerve endings. Yeah. I don't know what, what the science behind it is, but oh, it's painful. It's just called pain. I oh, think. I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> just thinking about it. <laughs> So obviously, you know, we're going to talk a lot in part two about your boxing and about how you've changed from being a, a what we call a regulation boxer to being a bare knuckle boxer. boxer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a huge transition. Yeah. You know, I mean, normally when you're ugly like me, you can take that risk. But I mean, you know, you are really putting yourself on the line there. So we're going to talk about that in part two. But before we get into part two, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. I want you to imagine now there's someone back there in England or in their home country watching this video, a young lad. Yeah. If they were going to come out here, what would you say to them? Listen, come and sit down with me and I want to give you these words of advice. What would you say to them? <clears throat> If you're planning on doing it, then then do it. Um, what's the word? Um, so when you edit this bit, when, when you if, if you're spontaneous and you think of something, then do it. If I didn't, if I have regrets or didn't take the chance of coming out, then I won't be as happy as I am now. So um, Thailand, everyone thinks, well, I did. That it's a third world country. It really isn't. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you've got paradise here. Um, you've got the sunshine, but it's still very built up, very very modern and the people are amazing. So if you're thinking of coming over, just do it. <laughs> and I promise you won't regret it. There you go, you can't ask me uh, one last question for you. Now I do appreciate you getting married. Yeah, yes, this, this is pre-marriage, okay? So in case you're watching, I mean, talk to me about the girls. I mean, you're a young lad, you know, you're six pack, you're good looking, you know, you're pretty much the opposite to me and I done all right. So how the hell did you cope? Right, do you know what? It's funny you say that because, because Back, I've always thought I was a good looking lad. I'm a bit of an arrogant, vain. And can't cool. imagine it. Can I can't imagine it, but I am. And uh, when I first came over, I had my top button done up, my hair all like smooth and stuff. And I'm walking down in coast, like jeans, like chinos, like in like 40 degree heat. And I'm walking down, you know, um, um, Arc Bar sort of yeah. area. I'm walking down there thinking I'm cool. And then, oh, sexy man, where you going? I was like, yeah, I knew I was looking good tonight. And then I've heard, I'm walking down out here, oh, it's sexy, and I've looked back, uh, and it's some horrible, fat old bloke who's like, I'm not that bad. <laughs> and, and they're going, sexy man, we are, oh, I missed that. Like, so out here, if you're, if you're young, if you're not, if you're good looking, if you're not, women love white guys, just, just Western, Western people, so. Um, I think what TJ's really <laughs> trying to say is that when we go out of a night together, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're, exactly. we're both fair yeah, game. Exactly. 100, 100, 100%, 100%. You know, back in England, I'll be like, oh, for God's sake, here we go again. I'll, I'll go and get the beers, you crack on. Whereas out here, it's out, like, out here, it doesn't he, matter. he's got too much energy. I'll be asleep in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Brilliant. Well, listen, my man, it's been fantastic. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much for sharing. Cheer, Guys, come back and watch part two, which will be out on Friday. Part two is a lot more serious side of TJ. We're going to talk about his boxing, about bare knuckle, about the commitment, the changes he's made in his lifestyle from being the party boy to now the serious guy and also you've got a fight coming up soon 
over in America? I have. I'm yeah. going to be fighting in Miami. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to Looking that. forward to that. Well, there you go, guys. So come back Friday, part two. Check it out. Me and TJ will be here, and we're going to show you about what's all included in how you can train as a boxer, the sacrifices you've got to make, all those kind of things that perhaps, when you look from the outside in, you don't appreciate just what these guys have to go through. All right, guys, that's it from us today. Thank you very much for watching. And please, as always, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out our members area. More and more members are joining each and every week, which is fantastic. And when things start to reopen, we will be getting you in there and getting you your free buzzing shots and discounts. And guys, join our Discord group. I'll get TJ on there. He'll love it. And uh, we'll get you on there. Um, join our Discord group. <laughs> connect with TJ, ask him questions. If you are an up and coming lad that wants to get into boxing or you're into your martial arts or training and you want to ask TJ some questions, jump on there. I'll get him to join and Sounds you can good. fire away there. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it from us. Thank you very much for watching. And please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.